Now that's the question before the break. How much pressure is on Troy Weaver to, Spenny put, nail this draft? Does this say nail this draft, or is this, Lindsay, like you said, more of the setup to the nail? Because when we talk here on Big D Energy and all the basketball guys, no matter what happens in this draft, no matter what happens, we still don't think this team's a playoff team. Right. Right? We don't think we're there yet. So is this the quiet before the storm? Is this like, don't screw up because you got to put the pieces in place? And maybe now, maybe this year, Lindsey Hunter, they need to draft that Lindsey Hunter guy. Right? right? That, that The guy in the room, the guy that makes them go, um, obviously, whether it's a wing or whatever, but how much pressure to you is on Troy Weaver to nail this draft? Well, I, I don't think there's I don't think there's much pressure because, you know, like like we were talking about earlier, um, pressure comes when you draft a guy that's supposed to be a lock. Like when you got a guy that's supposed to be a generational player, you know, um, I can think back when when um, Philadelphia took Sean Bradley at two over Penny Hardaway. You know, so Sean was really good and played a long time, but he wasn't Penny Hardaway. Right. You know, so, so. Um, and and argument, different positions, yeah, different, different positions. size size guys. So on that on that front, a lot of times it's sort of like you said that diamond. In, is this the diamond in the rough draft? I think I absolutely think so. So th this is the one that so there's no pressure because Troy Weaver's sort of out there digging for gold. Right. Right, digging right. for gold. Now he's got great equipment. He's got a great team around him. Right. He, but are they gonna find that player? So it, it's sort of that that for lack of a better term, that nugget. That second round Yochich. Right. You know, like <laughs> it, it, I mean that's well, shooting it, for the sky, but you need a guy like you really, if you drafted a guy and say it's a wing or whatever, but this guy who's a legitimate NBA player for 10 years, then that's a win. That's a win. No matter, if, it, no matter if he's here, if he's not, or whatever, but an NBA caliber 10-year guy. And that's what you're looking for. You're, you're, of course, you want him to maximize his ability to be as great as he can be, but if you find a guy that's a starter, fringe player, then you've done a good job. So this, so so again, maybe are we setting ourselves up that this might be drafting to potential, or to drafting to something that something that, like I want to hear if we draw and 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 if you guys are like, oh, I didn't see him coming, or I like this guy, but then Troy Weaver or Monty comes out and said, well, we drafted him because we like this in him. What? As opposed to because he does these five things well right. and he has to do this, but this guy, he's this type of player. Well, D Mac, I think the draft has solely become a potential draft. Like it used to be because you saw more of guys. Guys went to school more, and so you knew kind of what they were bringing to the table. There were certain things that you could see a guy play four years in college or three years in college, and you go, oh, he can do this. This will translate. He has to work on this, but now, because guys are so young, you go, guys are going to the G League or guys are going, you know, to college for one year. So now you are solely drafting on potentially he could be this. I'm looking at his talent and his skill set. That potentially can translate. We know with Brandon Miller, with his size and his shooting ability, that should translate. You know, Scoot Henderson, athletic freak. 6'3 guard that can run and jump like Westbrook. That should translate. And we watched him in the G League for two years. He was the youngest player in the G League at 17. Which, which, which when you're saying that, you would you, I'm understanding, you give him more credibility because of playing two years with men. Yes. With men, with NBA rules and stuff like this. You can't teach that. You know, I get, hey, Spen, Sam, I would be remiss because I got to give Brandon Katz credit because earlier on when we were talking about Lindsay's draft he, he did say it's different than it was 30 years ago because now you're drafting you nailed it drafted 18 19 year olds this is like a potential draft mm -hmm. yes right so this is a pre-draft to the pre-draft which goes back to what Neil always says at, and the NBA and the NHL it's changed where it's the restricted free agent and you got to go out and find that contract 
it's it's sort of weird because in hockey it's the same way. We're coming into the draft next week and we'll be talking about the NHL. Is like Steve Eiserman going to make a trade for a restricted guy, a la what Florida did last year? Right. So the game has changed. So yes. it's it's more on the potential of the potential, other than what three guys at the top. Can you say that? Can any of you, Spenny? Can you say that about any of the other guys past number three? I think Eamon Thompson is is a lock. Like he'll transit because he's they say he's a freak athlete, and the way he can get to the hole, the way he can distribute and make plays, be a playmaker. I think he is also up there with those guys. But it's you know he's in the overtime elite league. He was he wasn't playing against grown men and stuff like that. So there are are little hesitations. But I think he will also be a guy that is like like he's going to be a stud. So Lindsay, let me go back to this. Because you said this earlier about the rookie wall because of playing 37 games or 41 games or whatever like that. You went through it and you played a college career. How, and, and you experienced it, right? So it wasn't until then your sophomore season, your second year that you were ready to prepare for that. Is it fair to say that some of these kids because they're only coming out one and done so early, it takes them two and three years to figure it out is that what we're seeing and it's more of the delayed development yeah you're gonna sign it's almost like it's almost like premier league soccer where they're signing these 14 15 (laughs) year olds and waiting for them to mature till they're in their 20 you know like that just just to get them under under realm is that what's happening here so maybe as a fan when we have some of these younger guys the durans the caves the ivies let's relax a little bit and you have to you have to tailor your expectations is that the biggest, one of the biggest changes that I, I don't, like we talk about it, but to understand the gravity, it's such a younger game. Right. And, and see, and I think people don't understand um, how much of a transition it is because you can look back and um, you can look back at LeBron James, for instance. He was coming out of high school. His body was pro ready. At, at 19, 18, 19. And, and you'd look at still compared to what it turned into. Right. You'd right. look at, look at a little <laughs> pit squeak. <laughs> right. But as as freakish of an athlete and and with the IQ that LeBron, and he had an unbelievable rookie year. He had a great rookie season, but still wasn't able to get to the point where he could get his team to the playoffs for like two years. You know? And yeah. that's a and that's an all-time great. I, you know, the only guy in this draft that they're potentially saying is going to be that way is Victor. So you still have to tailor your expectations regardless of how great we think these guys are going to be. None of them, and I, can, I, can, I think we all will agree, none of these guys, with the exception of Victor, is going to be in the LeBron realm, right? Oh, absolutely. Right. But who is in the LeBron round, right? But that's Sam? my point. And it took LeBron, you know. To, it took to LeBron the, time to get to the LeBron round. Yes, yes. So just imagine what it's going to take for some of these other guys. You know, so them, I think the best thing for a lot of them is to come to a team that's already established. You know, if you can get drafted, you know, to a playoff team or a, a borderline playoff team and you can come and fit in and they – put you in a role, you know, Absolutely. you can really develop that way. You know, and I think we've watched that happen with several teams. You know, if you can be a plug and play guy early on in your career and then you develop, you watch Cam Thomas at um, when he was at Phoenix, similar situation. You know, he was a plug and play guy with Chris Paul and, and Devin Booker. So those guys developed, got better every year. You know, now they're guys that are looking to cash in on their developments. No, and, and and that's the big thing too, right? Because uh, and that's where you have to look at also with with Victor. But that's that's where the argument to a to a scoop being able to have played against the men to be developed. So you would expect that if drafts him, his top rookie wall will probably, if anybody's non-existent, it would be him. And there's always an outlier to that, isn't right. it? But but usually it takes a year, and now. It takes a couple more. That's not out of, out of the realm. Right, absolutely. And, and you know, we, when we talk about these guys, the competition they played against, uh, Victor Wimignana has been playing against pros his whole life. Right. You know, sort, sort of like Jokic, sort of like, you know, 
all the other international players, they've always played against pros. So the physicality they're used to. You now, now you're, you're a great one because you've played against some, obviously the greatest talent and, and seen some big, big guys. Like is Wembayama, what, what is your take? Is he going to be the guy that is expected? Or is it, to me, it's like you, you mentioned Sean Bradley. He was 7'2". Well, now, was... Wembayama's bigger, whatever, like this. I mean, like, like more bulk on the frame and stuff like this, but do you expect him to be what everybody says he is, or you still got to see him play in the league? Well, here's the thing that impressed me about him, because I've watched, you know, I started watching him last year, and one thing that's consistent about him, well, there are a few things that, that every time I watch him play, he does it consistently without a problem. He's a natural shot blocker. He naturally can meet you at the rim and deter your shot or block it. He's a tremendous ball handler, like, like not just occasional. He is a natural ball handler. Like, like as far as like Jokic, like he he's big like man Jokic. bringing up the yes, bringing he's, up the floor. He's, he's that comfortable with that, the ball. That blows me away. He's exactly. got better handles than Jokic. He's got better handles than Jokic. Yes, yes. and yeah, that's from sure. a sure. Jokic slap for sure. And and um. Now, I know he's only shooting, what, 27% from the three right now, something like that. Mm -hmm. But that'll change because I know, he, you know he's going to get to work on it a lot more. And his shot is, is not broken. Like, it, his shot is really good. It's, it's, almost, it's almost there a couple tweaks. But how and, – and until – think about it. Has he had to develop that in the European game or whatever? No, it's more down Ooh. low in the NBA game. So – what a year maybe two years he's been trying to develop it i mean and he shoots free throws well so his shot's not broken it's not and lucky. that's the outlier right for the big man that has a silky like I, i've seen his free throw and he looks looks like a guy who's six four exactly yeah and, and you know we we normally say bigs it takes bigs a little longer to to develop and to find themselves but I don't consider him just a typical big. Right. Because just the things that he can do, the way he moves. I've watched him bring the ball to the court against pressure. And he brings it up. It doesn't bother him. <laughs> and that's spoken from the guy. That's from Lindsey Hunter. You know, one of the best bring up the ball guys, break the trap, whatever like this, to whatever, giving him his props. Anyway.